This podcast is brought to you by OSPI, the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers, the advocacy body for professional engineers in the engineering community in Ontario. Welcome to Engineering the Future, a podcast presented by the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers. I am your host, Jerome James. Today I'm joined by Amy Dietz Graham, Senior Wealth Advisor and Portfolio Manager with National Bank Financial. Amy has worked in wealth management since 2007 and excels at helping clients navigate tricky market conditions. Amy has been quoted in the Globe and Mail, CBC News, the Canadian Press, Advisors Edge Magazine, and BNN. She is also a sought-after speaker at events right across Toronto. Amy, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Jerome. Absolutely. So let's dive right into it. When people think about investing, they often think about economic factors that tend to be outside of their control. Can you explain more about those human factors that go into great investing? It's a really good question. It's a thing. One of the most important pieces when it comes to investing is the behavioral aspect, because it's all well and good to have a financial plan, to have great investments. But if you don't know how to interact with those things, when times get tough, that's where people will make the ultimate mistake. And you can see it, especially in markets that we're going through today. Things are very volatile. People are feeling uneasy. So it's a real test to see if you can stick with, you know, the proper investment portfolio you've put together and hopefully the financial plan you've, you've put all in place, making sure you can stick with it. So making sure you've got that mindset to get through it mm-hmm. is the most important piece. Interesting. And every individual has a different comfort level when it comes to investing. As a portfolio manager, how do you assess each client's unique risk pro- like profile? Yeah, and this is something oftentimes clients would be used to. You would have these questionnaires, right? And you fill out a questionnaire. Where do you fall? Are you feeling, do you feel like you're a growth investor, a balanced investor? And, and how do you handle risk? Mm-hmm. The way I look at it when we start, talk to our clients is you really want to understand their personalities, right? right? So it's okay to check a few boxes, but really understanding your relationship with money. So a really good wealth advisor will spend the time getting to know you on a much deeper level. Um, Questions, things like, what's your first money memory? Because Mm. believe it or not, it sets the stage if you go way back in childhood of how you've engaged with money, what, how your parents interacted with money, what's your experience will really set the tone of how you interact with money and and going forward. Um, You know, thinking about market volatility, if you remember seeing family members being really stressed about the environment that they're in, or maybe they had a good habit of investing when times were down, buying low, that will really come into play um, later on in life. So a good Mm -hmm. wealth advisor will ask you a lot of different questions to understand your comfort level, asking questions such as, you know, if you had, you know, $100 and it dropped to 50, how are you going to feel? Right. Are you going to feel upset about it? Are you going to feel okay? Are you going to want to invest more? All of these types of things will come into play to really assess your true risk. Mm-hmm. Because what often happens is people might think that they are a growth investor, meaning they're right. comfortable with equities, only to find out when they go through a difficult period wait a second, this is more risk than I really anticipated. I'm not comfortable. I want to flock to safety. And that's when you're making the the ultimate mistake is you're selling into a down market to run to safety when you really should be waiting and giving it time to come back. So doing that work up front Mm -hmm. is really, really important. When you're assessing a client's uh, uh, risk tolerance, does... um, their socioeconomic background come into play, how you said how their parents uh, would handle money. Do you see certain um, techniques that are passed down for different groups and, and not so much for other groups? And how do you assess the gap of knowledge that um, you'd want to have someone to have 
um, before they go into an investment. So a big part, again, is understanding all the different moving factors. So everything that you just talked touched on absolutely needs to be part of the conversation. And since we're talking, you know, with a group of engineers, I'm married to an engineer. So, you know, if we generalize for a minute and we look at the traits of an engineer, what are some of the common traits? Well, oftentimes they're curious people. So they like to understand the in detailed oriented people. Getting to know them on that level so that you can engage them in terms of what they need to know to feel comfortable with an investment is really, really important. So I know my engineering clients, for the most part, they like understanding why we selected an investment to really understand what makes it tick because it's not a perfect science as precise as we want things to be. There's a bit of an art when it comes to investing. So the more comfortable you can get and understanding all the different moving parts. So when things are out of your control, the more likely you are to stick with the overall plan when times get tough. Right. Very interesting. Um, a lot of people are moving to that whole do-it-yourself model of investing online, um, using online apps like Wealthsimple. Uh, TD has platforms that are easy and accessible um, with a few clicks and I don't even know if you have to go into the branch anymore. <laughs> um, what does an asset manager, a portfolio manager bring to the table that um, some of these individuals may be missing out on? It's a good question. And there's lots of people that do like to do things on their own. And now you need to have the level of time to do that. Again, when we're talking about behavior, you really have to be able to self-assess your own behavior when times get tough. Right. Um, so why clients will ultimately uh, work with an advisor oftentimes is, you know, I say it all the time, our clients are bright, brilliant people. They could do this on their own, but mm -hmm. they're usually time constrained, busy doing what they love best, or when they do get downtime, they have other passions that interest them. And so they look to, to partner with somebody that truly understands them and their family situation to put a plan into place that they're comfortable with. And then our job is to run it on a day to day basis for them. But often checking in to say, here's where we're at, making sure there's been if there's been any changes in their lives. But where a wealth advisor can really help is when things do get tough and they always do. We go through these market cycles and right now you're hearing the word recession a lot. It's having that other point of contact. Uh, think of it as a coach, right? Lots of athletes have a coach. The coach isn't running the race, but they have the coach to see things that perhaps they don't see or to give them a different perspective. And it's that different perspective in looking at all the different moving parts in their life and keeping them on track. That is really where you get that, that compounding or that gap up in mm -hmm. terms of rate of return. We hope you're enjoying this episode so far. At OSPI, we're here for you. Making sure government, media, and the public are listening to the voice of engineers. You can learn more at ospi.on.ca. Engineers like to do things that are precise and predictable. Um, that's what their trade kind of um, stands for. How do you get an engineer to invest in something that takes away that comfort level and puts them into an unpredictable situation like an unpredictable market? It can be challenging, um, especially if you're used to having things that are predictable and precise. It, investing can be really challenging and frustrating, right? Mm -hmm. For for oftentimes for, for engineer folks, because it just drives you crazy as much research as you do and as much planning and modeling as you do, it could still go sideways. Right. And so the most, the, the way we look at it is really understanding the, the nuts and bolts of what we put together. So building a plan, and we talk about financial planning, oftentimes people will think, oh, you know, plan to talk about retirement, but it's so much more than that today. It's looking at, you know, what are some of your goals you have, children's education, a secondary property, Retirement is obviously on the list. A whole host of things that you can plan these different items out. We can ran, you know, put some rates of return to it, model inflation, which is a hot topic right now, um, and, and model out those different scenarios so that when we do go through times that maybe aren't predicted or what we didn't think have happened, we've built in buffers and parameters around that so that we can get ourselves through it because we've thought through a number of different scenarios that if mm. one goes one way, 
okay, well, we thought about it. We've got buffer on this side of the plan that we're still okay and ultimately still able to achieve those goals. Okay. So the market moves unpredictably, but their movements are in the realm of being able to be modeled so that that can give you a little bit of comfort you got it. and understanding of this was a, a percentage of a, of a, a chance of to happen. You're set because we took these parameters and precautions. You so, got it. Okay. And a wealth advisor can help take the emotion out of it too, right? Because we can look at it from a different lens and to really partner with you to make sure that you're comfortable and talk the language that you're used to speaking and mm -hmm. seeing that level of detail of what would make you more comfortable. Right. And, that, and that's a big, important piece. Who would you say comes to the same level of an engineer with that kind of tact to the predictable? And... How do you kind of work through um, those tendencies? Um, I would like to know because <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if there's other people out there that have the, those same kind of pre preclivities. They are. You know, the medical community, I often <laughs> find they like to understand all the moving parts. But again, most of them are time constrained, right? right? So as much as you would like to do it yourself, it's having that level of time to commit to it. Um, so it's finding somebody that's going to be able to speak your language, to model it out so that you can see it in a fashion that you're comfortable with, and then to really understand what you're investing in and why do you own it. And that can help you, you know, let go of the reins and, and let somebody else come in and help you. But making sure that whoever you're working with is checking in with you on a consistent basis, you know, because your life will change. Mm -hmm. And just like any project, as you go through projects, different variables will crop up inev inevitably. So it's having somebody that's checking in to making sure that it's updated and consistent with your current situation. Great. Um, as a beginner, someone that's just starting out in investing, are there assets that you may want to stay away from? Or are there even assets that you would suggest that you take a look at before investing in other ones? That's a good question, because oftentimes you'll hear the rule of thumb, you're younger, this is when you can take on risks. But going back to what we talked about at the beginning, going back to your behavior, mm -hmm. if you're just somebody who knows, like, when times get risky, you're not going to sleep well at night, you're just going to be stressed out. I would argue you're better off to be a little bit more conservative than what convention would tell you okay. because you're more likely to stick with the plan. Ah. So it's sticking with it. And especially if you're young, just starting to save a little bit versus mm -hmm. nothing. Think about compounding. We hear that all the time. But it's if you can start young, just do a little bit each month or line it with your paycheck so it's all automated so you don't even have to think about it. You'll be miles ahead of your peers just mm -hmm. because you've started so early. Right, right. I want to throw out some, some terms here. What comes to mind when someone's like, I want to invest in ETFs or I want to invest in crypto? Yep. Like what's Those are all tools, right? Mm -hmm. So the way we look at different investment options, GICs, bonds, equities, crypto, you name it, they're all just tools. But essentially bringing it back to the beginning, you really want to have a foundation of a plan. What is it that you're trying to do? What kind of rate of return do you need to get your goals? It's all interesting to think about, you know, what did the TSX do this year or the S&P 500? Interesting fact, but does it really matter if your rate of return to reach your goal, maybe you need a 10% rate of return. Maybe mm -hmm. you only need a 4% rate of return. That will tell us what tools we need to engage to get to whatever goal you're trying to do. So it's more about your personal benchmark versus what the indices are doing. Okay. Um, that's interesting. So it, it, it kind of takes away the idea that, oh, I have to be in one thing versus another. Right. And it's okay. And again, aligning with your goals. So it's maybe, you know, a young person aspires to have a house. Maybe that's their first, you know, big goal on their list. That's going to be in different engagement than somebody who perhaps has a longer term plan of, you know, I've got my children's education 20 years down the road from now. Mm. That's very different. So having those specific goals and specific conversations that helps a wealth advisor figure out what tools we need to bring to bear in order to achieve those. Right. So there's many different factors that go into making these 
life changing decisions. And the beauty is once you get to the bottom of the plan, it's time to start <laughs> all over because your whole situation has probably changed again. So right. it's, we start again and uh, we're always keeping up to date as life changes. Right. Interesting. Is there one particular like piece of advice that is all encompassing no matter where you're starting from or what your investment goals? I think having a real honest conversation with yourself as to what your true risk parameter is so that you can set up a, a foundational plan so that when you get through difficult times, it's you don't make the ultimate mistake like we saw in 2008 where you know a high proportion of Canadians sold to cash only to miss the turnaround of the market. We don't want people to go through that because that can really have a, a really major impact longer term. So it's really understanding yourself and then putting a plan in place and then to execute that plan ongoing. That sounds like great advice. Thank you so much, Amy, for breaking it all down for us today. Uh, this was, you know, a, it's a complicated topic, but uh, you spoke so eloquently and clearly on the topic. So that's that was great. Thanks, Jerome. Once again, I just spoke with Amy Dietz Graham, who is a senior wealth advisor and Portfolio Manager with National Bank Financial. I'm your host, Jerome James. This has been Engineering the Future. Thank you for listening. From all of us at OSPI, the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers, thanks for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode.